this is for the YouTube channel. So this is Saveta. I'm going to just call him Saveta because I always pronounce his last name wrong versus the Jedi myself here. So this was in the Motor City Open 2018. This was a very, uh, very good game. I mean, it was very good. We actually looked at a uh, post game analysis after this and it was crazy. It was pretty nice stuff here. So um, we, today's topic is flexibility in the accelerated dragon. And what that is, is um, my favorite opening hyper accelerated dragon, of course, for playing black here. And we go into this opening and I'm going to show you exactly how it works and what happens and etc. So here we go. E4, C5 all day, every day. Knight f3 and g6. This becomes the hyper accelerated dragon. If you just go dragon, it's usually d6 now and g6 later. But your problem is you commit this pawn very early in the dragon. Very early. So when you commit this pawn, um, you already know, like how Bobby Fischer says, sack, sack, mate. You already know that this pawn is uh, going to stay here and g6 and h4 is going to be a problem. So they hold this d pawn to be able to combat that with d5. That's the whole idea of the opening. So that is the hyper accelerated dragon. Now, um, Let's look at this. Actually, I see Matt Smith, Magnus the Beginner. Okay. So uh, I go G6, the usual stuff. Playing my stuff after G6, he's knight to C3. Easy stuff, bishop G7. Then he goes bishop C4. And I'm like, okay, you know what? This is not the usual move here. The usual move is D4. Um, but bishop C4 can be played. It can be played. So I was like, okay, this is the one that, you know, a lot of times you'll get mixed up. You don't want to get in the problem in the habit of playing E6 and G6 because you might get in trouble with like knight B5 stuff. The engine actually just crushes this with D4. Now D4 is really strong because there's holes on D6. So be very careful if you play this playing E6 and G6. So you got to be careful. So knight to C6, I've developed a rule that when they develop the knight here, I just do the same thing. Move the knight here and then I play flexible like D6, E6, Knight E7. The engine likes to do that and then castle and D5 stuff. That's what they like to do. So I just do that. Um, so I play knight to C6, ready to go. He goes D3. I'm like, okay, he's not playing the regular Sicilian anymore. D4 is just probably not happening. So he played D3. I was like, okay, cool. Well, what do we do here? Easy stuff. I just play D6. Then he goes H3, actually. And then I'm like, what is this guy playing here? I'm like, well, first off, my bishop's not going to g4 anymore, so I don't really need to actually develop this bishop here. So I'm like, okay, well, let's just play in simple move my same plan. I just go e6 now. Why is this flexible? Because I can play d5 if I want to, but also if I have to later on, maybe I can go e5. And I can also go f5. So I'm just, I'm not telling anything yet. Not sure where I want to put anything. So he plays a3. At this point, I was like, okay, I don't know what's going on. This is a wild game already. I've never seen a Sicilian like this. So I was like, where is he going to put this bishop? I don't know what he's doing, but I'm not, uh, uh, to say the least, it's not frightening, but it's also like, bro, what are you doing? What is this weird stuff? So he plays a3. I go knight g to e7. We have castles. Castles, still easy stuff. You got to develop in the beginning. Looks like an Italian game for white. Is that right? Is it just a super Italian? Stopped kind of anything coming into B4 and G4. So we play kind of passive in the beginning to like prepare stuff and, and make sure everything's all good. Then he puts the bishops out later. Like he did here, put the bishop outside the pawn chain. Knights, knights. I mean, it's just an equal position. Very equal. Jedi too powerful. Nostrovsky and the dark side are no match. That's right, C Nation. So knight to C3. Oh, actually, uh, sorry. Um, bishop G5 is what he played. They play bishop to g5. I go h6 to kick him. He goes bishop to h4. I go h6. Rook b1. I'm going to just show you these next few moves so we can get into the, the depth of this opening. The flexibility. So, fine gold with the ray. Shout out to fine gold, guys. Shout out to the big fella. Ben fine gold. Oh my goodness. Get hype in the chat for the big man. What's up, man? Hope you had a great stream. Thanks for the raid, as usual. This, we actually recording right now for our YouTube. Shout out to Ben Feingold. He got a nasty YouTube, like ridiculous, ridiculous YouTube. So we actually recording this video right now to put on YouTube. Feingold, trying to get like you, big guy. Thanks so much, bro, for the raid. Hope you have a good one. Feingold is raiding. Absolutely, absolutely. Thanks for the follows, guys. Welcome to the stream. Welcome to the stream. We are definitely covering the game right here. Ben is a big, big fella. That's right. Ben is the man, the big fella from the other side no he's been here for a while so uh, much respect to, to ben thanks so much thanks so much for the rate thank you bro thank you thank you so much we in here we in here thanks guys thanks so let's get back to the analysis here this uh if you're just getting here first off thank you so much welcome to the stream hit the follow button so you know when we go live here is the youtube we just uh that's for this is what we're covering so 
we're covering stuff that we're posting on YouTube. So here we go. This this is from the beginning, starting from the jump here. Since we got a lot of people coming in, we'll start from the beginning. Meow, mix meow. Thanks so much for the hundred bits, says Rar. Rar, like Ben. Rar, thank you so much. So here we go. Uh, I'm playing the black pieces here against Saveta. By the way, his rating is like 2100, something like that. 21. And some change, pretty strong here. I'm playing a hyper accelerated dragon here. Knight, uh, E4, knight of three. E4, C5, knight of three. G6, knight to C3. And then after knight to c3, there's bishop to g7. <laughs> ben is that guy that loves to play f6, right? That's funny. Funny. He loves to play f6. That's funny. Bishop c4, knight to c6. So at this point, I knew something was kind of like weird. I was like, not, not weird. People play this kind of Sicilian all the time. They always play this kind of Sicilian trying to do something different. So I'm like, you know what? Okay, I'm going to go... Uh, I'm gonna go d6 and keep it keep it you know nice and easy here. After d6, he goes h3. H3. I've never honestly seen this that much, but it does. Not that it doesn't make sense. And if you want to like throw Sicilian players off, I think he did a good job of throwing me off. But um, at the same time, I'm not like afraid or like this is this is attack. Like where's his attack kind of thing? It's more like what is this? So it's kind of confusing. So you have to make moves. And honestly, when you have many options, you can always. Um, have a, a lot of room for error a lot of room for error so h3 bishop g4 is not is non-existent so i go e6 here e6 is a move because it's very flexible and I, I got this from the engine i remember analyzing with the engine before and trying to figure out what i should do in certain positions like this one because they you don't know if you do i go e5 do i go d6 uh series blunder says f6 <laughs> coming in from the fine go raid says f6 uh, that's great stuff right there. Serious blunder and great name, by the way, too. Thanks for the follow, SF array. If white isn't going H3, do main lines involve Bishop G4? Great question, Z Nation. Yes, yes, absolutely. If if they don't go H3, Bishop G4 is a common move to make, just not as fast as he played H3. JT, thanks for the 100 bits, man. Appreciate that. So uh, Bishop G4, though, is, uh, is like... It's a move to make. It really is because d4 is a, a hole and you can put this, you know, you can take this and take more control over here, play e5, stuff like that. So, serious blunder. Thank you for the one bit there, bro. e6, a3. And then after a3, I thought this was extremely weird, bro. I mean, extremely weird. a3 is like, what is this? You know what I mean? Like, what is this, bro? So I was like, okay, you know what? I'm just going to keep developing. Just because it looks weird doesn't mean that I just can't just keep going. So I played knight g to e7. So I get out of the way here. In these kind of positions, I often go e5 and knight g to e7 as black, but maybe with the bishop on c4, it doesn't make sense. That's pretty good, Sasha. Harlem Knight, thanks for Harlem Knight 404. Thank you for the Twitch Prime sub. Thank you so much. And our loading. Thanks for the follow. Um, yeah, but I, I see what you're saying there because this, this, what, uh, what is this legit? Yeah, like what is this, right? What is this? Is this a thing? Harlem Knight 404 with the sub. That's right. But going back to this, look at this. Like, I understand what you're saying because that E5 move, like if I go E5, this is a problem with it. Committing E5 a lot. I used to do this a lot. I used to play the symmetrical English because I play all Roman DG Hashvili stuff. I love Roman DG Hashvili. So when I'm playing, when I when I'm playing his stuff, the symmetrical English is some stuff that he likes. So, you know, when we was playing this, I just know it didn't fit my style. I'm an attacking player and me playing this was not fun. It was not fun at all, bro. It was just not a thing to me. So um, I got, I mean, not that I had bad results, but it was so boring and I'm not a boring player. So when you get this kind of thing, you do have F5, but you always have to worry about D5. And this honestly makes the position very drawn, very drawish, I would say. Matt Smith, thanks for 100 bits, bro. Appreciate it. So it's like a, it's a problem here. This is a problem here. So I learned from the engine. I used to do this too a lot. Sasha, I used to do this all the time, all the time. E5, but um, without even thinking too. But after analyzing with the engine, E6 is just the flexibility, like in the title today, the flexibility of the dragon. So this is still an accelerated dragon, but the flexibility part is, I learned this from actually the engine, where I can maybe play E5 later, but after knight G to E7, I used to play knight F6. That's an error. So, because I'm blocking this file. So, knight g to e7 is really good. So, I can play d5 later. I can play e5. I'm always set up to play f5. I haven't said anything yet. I haven't told my hand yet. So, it's pretty nice to be able to play with this. So, I, and I didn't know what he was doing either. So, I had to play this way. So, after e6, he played a3. Knight g to e7. We, get, we both get out the way. Bishop g5. I go h6 to kick the bishop, of course, just to like question them. Thanks for the explanation. No problem, Sasha. We all just got to get better, better as a player, right? Well, is that a custom... That's right. That is. That is absolutely. 
So h6, bishop g5, bishop h4. So I have to bishop to h4, a6. Okay, rook b1, b5, and bishop a2. So when we go bishop to a2, at this point, I'm like, this is a problem. This is a problem, not really for me, but for him. Really for him. Because this bishop is going to be a problem here. So now, you guys, you play black here. This is a very informative stream and, and very interactive. You here, what do you do with the black pieces now? I have done a lot. And first off, you have to develop the pieces. You got to find plans. And now this is the time where after this move, now you like, which way do I go? I can do this. I can do that. I can do blah, blah, blah. What are you going to do with black? What's your opponent's rating? He's like 21 and some change, 2115, something like that. This is so good. I only play this line. So thanks for explaining. No problem. Bishop b7 from x Steve. b4. Hello. What's up, Anheim? Yo, big fella. What's up, Martin Kessler? Queen b6 from Cavalito. Bishop to b7 from Grantix. All good stuff, guys. All good stuff here. I still haven't seen the move yet, though. It's pretty, pretty cool. Our pawn chain points to the queen side. And our g7 bishop supports queen side play. Ah, I like bishop b7. f5 from Sasha. Knight d5. Knight d4, I mean. I think you mean. Queen a5, b4, knight d4. Yeah, that's what you meant. g5. That's a nice move, Mr. Royal. That's actually a really nice move. Queen c7, Caesar. F5, then flex. F5, stand up, flex real hard. Sit back down. D5 seems to me. Okay, queen c7, queen b6. So here's what happened. Here's what I did, actually. This is what I did. D5 hanging, correct. D5 is hanging. Here we go. Nobody has said it. This is the move I made first. I went rook b8 first, okay? There's always a preparation thing. Uh, so I, and here's the thing about it, guys. You never, like, I don't play poker like that. I mean, I've played it before, but I'm not really into it like that. I'm just into chess. So, um, but poker, I know a lot about, you just don't tell your hand, right? Don't tell your hand. Don't show signs of stuff yet. Sometimes it's too obvious. Sometimes you have to, because it is obvious, but here queen B six is like kind of obvious. I'm playing on this side of the board and I'm kind of almost abandoning, abandoning everything on this side. So I'm really going to play on this side of the board, which is fine, but I just don't feel like there's enough play here yet. It's just not enough yet. And you have to prepare. I say this a lot on this stream, the best players and the best attacking players prepare their stuff first. So this has got to be prepared. So I want to make sure all my pieces, if you ever notice Grandmaster's play and you like, man, he could have did that last move, but why did he wait? Because it's stronger and it's better when you do prepare things. So Rick to B8, I just wanted to play this first just to get this out of the way to make sure I never have to kind of worry about it. And it can kind of help me later and watch and learn from this game here. Actually, I actually play Rick to B8 first. Just before I did anything else, because I just want to make sure this rook is pretty solid. I have a lot of play here. I could have went bishop b7. I could have went g5. I could have did all of these things, but I, I wanted to go here first. And then we can proceed with probably everything else. Thanks for the follow, Mr. Royal. But then he can respond with b4. Um, you know what, Martin Kessler? You can definitely do that. You can respond to b4, but I'm just going to send a stretcher your way right now. And that, you, hey, you know, you can do whatever you like in life, Okay. You can do whatever you like, big fella. That's just not a move, though. That's just not a move. But that's okay, though. B4. B4 is absolutely a move on the board. But not a good move. So I went work to B8. Work to B8. Kara says, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> What's up, Kara? Welcome to the stream. Is there any art to understanding what moments of the game you're supposed to get up, stare at the opponent, and flex? Yes, it's an, it's an art to it. It's one of those moves that you're like, he didn't expect me to do this. So I'm gonna stand up and flex real hard. Absolutely. Get the stretcher out. That's correct. If zombies, what's up? That's not a move, Josh Bankrow says. For real. It's just not a move, right? So we go rook to b8. Rook to b8, he goes queen to d2. So he moves the queen up a little bit. Queen to d2. Honestly, what this move does, it just connects the rooks. It's a good move. It connects the rooks. Thanks for the follow, final guy, and 11 tic tacs. That's. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to 11 Tic Tacs. I mean, most the most random name ever. That, that's great. Very descriptive too. So, two rooks. Connected. The rooks are connected here. I mean, it just makes sense. Now, guys, same stuff here. What do you do? Black to move. I went rook b8. And then he plays queen d2. But I still need stuff to do here. So now going back to your moves in the chat. What do you do? Somebody actually said the move first. Queen to c7, now g5 from Martin Kessler.
Thanks for the follow. Talking six muffin. Knight to d4. Queen b6. Chess play channel on YouTube explains some chess tactics. Yep. Queen helps protect that knight from from earlier too. Okay. A5. Great enjoying the stream. Nice. Nice. Thanks, Matt. Bishop B7. Okay, so shout out to G5, because that is exactly what I did. I played G5 here. G5. So this is the flexibility that you do in a hyper accelerated dragon. I don't think, let me think. There's probably one that I know out of, I mean, I consider myself, oh, I am. I'm actually a student of Romans. I did take lessons with him after going through his books and some other stuff. I paid some money there. It was expensive, but I got some lessons with Roman right after the Millionaire Chess. So I do remember there's a lot of stuff that I did learn, but also knowing flexibility in this opening, meaning like there's only like one line, one or two lines that I can remember out of all the stuff I know about Celery Dragon that you ever go G5. It just usually doesn't happen. So here I had, a, I had to really think hard on this because I'm like, you know what? This is usually not ever played that much, but I feel like it's very so right. I feel like it's right. I like my position. This bishop on the other side of, of you know, of the board looking crazy over here, you know, try away from civilization. So maybe I can do this because th even though this diagonal is weak, he's over here for a while. Now he could do something like a little shake here. Rook A1, bishop B1, push these pawns up and finally get this open, which is a thing. But, you know, it's just wild. Matt, thanks for the 10 bucks, bro. Appreciate the tip. Let's go, Matt. Coach man says, what's up, Canty? How How's the uh, how's the good life? Great, bro. It's great. I play this and can never figure out what to do with the light square bishop. Yeah, what you mean for white or black? Oh, for black here. You probably want to put it on b7 sometimes, but I wanted to sit it here. I wanted to sit it here, and I'll show you why. I'll show you why. About the queen d2, g5. He goes bishop to g3. And now, what do you do? What do you do here, guys? Your move. Thank you, Matt. Says FB3. Thank you. Thanks again, Matt. Appreciate it. Matt tip $10. Thanks, bro. Why put the rook in the corner or move? Wait, wait. Why put the rook in the corner to move the bishop out there? <laughs> Honestly, Terry, that's a great question. That's a great observation. Honestly, this is just not good. This is just not good to have your bishop here. And honestly, in post-game analysis, he was saying, I regret putting my bishop here. That's what he was saying. So... Let's see how it happens though. We can reconnect the dragon. Obviously, not. why not take the pawn? Take what pawn? What pawn are you talking about, Steve? D5 is the move. So D5 is not a move, Mr. Royal. Um, you just don't want to jump off the deep end right now. We, we want to win this game, okay? But D5 is just not a move because the bishop will take the rook. F5. F5 is a possibility. Very nice. But I didn't go F5 because now this bishop has a purpose. I just don't want to sit here and relax. I just don't want to sit here and like chill and relax here. Now a5, prepare b4. Uh, a5 is nice. E5, what's new baby fun? New baby coming in January. Um, So, knight to g6. Wait, what did it? Yes, bishop g3. g5, pawn sacrifice. No, you know what? That just doesn't, that just doesn't work. That just doesn't work. So check this out. Check this out. G5, look, I thought about that, right? What if he sacks on it? But what's the best way to take, guys? If you're going to sack on this pawn, what are you going to sack with? The bishop or the knight? Martin Kessler, thanks for gifting the sub to Terry Flaps. That's what's up right there. That's what's up. Thanks, Martin Kessler. Appreciate the love, bro. What are you taking this with, knight or the bishop? So, Steve, you're taking it with the knight, okay? We'll look at both lines. It really doesn't matter. So, after knight takes, pawn takes, right? Knight takes, pawn takes. Let's do queen takes g5, which is a move. But also, when I'm up material, I really want to trade. Uh, I'm curious if knight g6 just works because I am hitting this. After queen takes, definitely don't take with the rook. Take with the knight. We do a simple piece count here. I'm still up a piece. It just doesn't matter here. It just doesn't matter. It's no good. You're welcome, man. Thanks, bro. Neither neither the queen. Oh, my goodness. Affinity HP. But that's okay. Affinity says, find the nearest building. Go to the top. Jump off the deep end. Simple. You could do this, too. Absolutely. And H5 is not a move. Just take the queen. So, that could happen. Knight, since the queen is... Yes, correct. That, it, that could happen. Is it good to have white pawns to block the white bishop? Or black pawns to block the white bishop from moving anywhere? That's a good one, actually. I think it's... um. 
That's a good question. For white, I think it'd be beneficial. Honestly, it's probably better for him this way because these can actually move. The other side, if it's his own, then this one, it's hard when it's your own. When it's your own, it's pretty tough because you got to figure out how to move them around without like changing every everything. That the trajectory of the whole position can change. If you don't figure out how to do that, or if you do figure out how to do that, it still changes because stuff starts to open. But here, at least, you know, he, he hopes that I mess up and play like F5 or something so he can use this for later. So that's kind of what it is. So, but I go G5. So here we go. G5, bishop to G3 is on the board. After bishop to G3, I go knight G6. So I'll put the knight here. I fill the void. I fill this hole here. Now you have to make sure you have a plan. I'm always, I always tell my students this all the time. Have a plan. And my plan here is king H7 and F5 or king H8 and F5. Because me, I didn't like king H7 too much because again, long term, I'm big on long term prophylactic moves. Okay. Um, prophylactic stuff. So I just don't want to sit here and like 10 moves, 20 moves down the line. He goes bishop b1 and stuff. And my king is, is ugly here. So probably king h8 in some cases. That was an idea. But I'm going to I'm gonna show you what happened. I'm going to show you what happened. Because he put me months ago. Revenge is coming. All right, let's go, Bacon. Let's go, Bacon. We got you. We got you, Bacon. We got you. I missed the beginning of the stream. Which opening did you play? This is... um. Uh, accelerated dragon. Sorry, hyper accelerated dragon, like in the title, actually. So, uh, we'll we'll, we'll cover at the beginning again, right right before um, we finish, right before we finish. So, thanks for the follow, bro. Thanks for the follow. The stream is the best. Thanks, bro. Thanks for the follows, guys. So, knight to g six. I go knight to g six, and then he goes ninety two. He went ninety two. I totally didn't see that in the title. No, that's okay, man. Direct link. Thanks for the follow. So he goes 92 here. So here you go, guys. This is, again, flexibility in this opening. Flexibility in the accelerated dragon. You can go B4. You can go a lot of moves here. I can even go with the other plan. But what do you do as black? What would you do? Sweet, because I just got in. Missed it. Yeah, no problem. We gonna, um, we'll gonna we come back and, and cover it again just to show it how we got to this position. You have to be very careful here. King h8 from x Steve. I think f5. Trying to free up his c pawn. I'm trying to free up the c pawn. Which means like c4? Or oh, him trying to free up the c pawn? King h8. Ke5. I know you mean knight. That's within. According to the plan, Cabalito. Okay. According to the plan, he says, rookie eight, knight d4. He still ain't said it. Nobody said it yet. Nobody said it. So king h8, that was the plan, but plans change. Absolutely. And I sat here for a while and I was like, hmm, hmm. And then I started thinking like a Jedi. And then the Jedi came out. Lightsaber came off the hip and we started to go crazy. Queen b6, I would get the stretcher, Kara, prepare it. Let me put mine in the chat. Let me put mine in the chat. Hold up. Let me get my stretcher ready because somebody going to need one. Absolutely. C4, open rook. B4, bishop, B7, queen, F6. 95, knight, G5, queen, E7. Nobody has said the move. Did he move his knight to C4? Knight, C, D, E5. Not a move. Not. Didn't happen. I think he moved the knight, other knight to D4. Wrong again. Wrong again. B4, not a move. It's not that it's not a move. I just didn't play it. I'm liking e5. There it is. Everything ceases and stops as Z Nation says the move that I played on the board in this position. I thought for a while. I thought for a while. And I'm like, what is he trying to do? So if we if we stop this, guys, and I could have played any of these other moves. I could have played any of these other moves. So with that being said, though, why e5? Why though, Z Nation? Why? Controls f4, stops d4, opens up our light square bishop. That's what he says. Z Nation, let me put some lightsabers in the air for you, Jedi. You have trained very well. Very well for this day, Jedi. Very nice. Very nice. There's some ropes for you. Extras in the back. You get you a new lightsaber today, big fella. You get you a new one. Martin Kessler with the uh, tier one sub. Gifting it over to Admiral Klein. Thanks, Martin Kessler. Another gifted sub. Two to the channel. Appreciate you, bro. Con so that's, that's all correct, Z Nation. I think it couldn't have been said better. Very nice. That's all. That's exactly what it was about. That's exactly. But it opens up the light square bishop for him. Correct. Darkest army. That's very, very good. Great observation. Great observation. And what I like to say to that darkest army is this right here. 
after I go here, sometimes chess is a chess, good chess, great chess. A lot of times is about give and take. I always talked about this in other YouTube videos about pendulum where it's a back and forth thing. Sometimes you got to give to get there's sacrifices that have to be made for other things to happen. Maybe something's a little bit stronger than something else. So speaking of that bishop, speaking of this bishop on a two like this, I was sitting here and I was thinking to myself, well, you know what? You know, D4, I just don't want him to play this. If he is able to open this position, I may be in trouble because I don't want him to open a position because I got I got weaknesses. Like, I mean, he wants he got the bishops are better than mine right now. And I kind of don't want him to, to open this position. I just don't want him to. It doesn't feel good. This feels very weak. D5 is a lot of pressure on it. He can bring a rook to D, the D file. And this is still here. And plus my rook's behind this. So there is a lot to worry about if he does play D4. And eventually play c3 2 get a big center i'm not a fan of it not a fan so i was like you know what i'd rather give him this file which i can just step out of king h8 king h7 play f5 later or something as opposed to making him play d4 i also stop his f4 move if he ever wants to play it and if anyone plays the black lion they know that i play the black lion anyone on the stream knows that i like to play the black lion shout out to simon williams for that is like you know knight f4 so my after i go e5 knight f4 is a huge move for me because the g5 pawn and i can take this way and probably end up using the g file in black lion fashion so i was ready for him lightsaber drawn staring at him with the robe on and the hood on ready ready i was ready here so i plays i play e5 e5 is on the board big fella e5 is on the board let me give you the next move as i catch up with the chat c3 find the move what do you do next forces there i don't think putting the lightsaber in the hands of someone as clumsy as me is a good idea it's okay you've earned it c nation Strong with him. Good stuff. Did your opponent play C3, D4 after? Look at you, Mr. Royal. Look at you. C3 is the move. Black Lion says fly, Eagles fly. I recommend you Google it. I recommend you Google it. I like playing it. It just throws people off. I know when people play it too. I just love it. Rook should leave B8, I think, says Martin Kessler. Ready, says Nightcast. We're ready. F5 is on the board. Well, F5 can't be a move because we're pinned, Quinn. So doesn't work f5 because the king is pinned king h8 king h7 b4 from martin kessler anything else anything else hello james what's up jmp how are you trade light square bishops with bishop to e6 that was a nice one g4 push it baby like pushing the pawns yeah sir g4 is a move that is a move knight f4 shout out to you p what is that pevla Pevla found it first. Pevla found it first. Knight to f4. I was just like, you know what? I'm about to start now. If I'm going to attack, why wait? Why wait? So I'll play knight to f4. Knight to f4. I'm going to go here now in black lion fashion. I'm going to go queen f6. Probably put the king here. Queen g6, h5, rook g8. Move this bishop probably to f6. g4, I'm on you. Or maybe put this bishop on h6 because it's easier on this diagonal. And it's over. I have a clear king side attack. So in a way, I'm also, like that's why I like to play the King's Indian Defense. If you play the King's Indian Defense and the Accelerated Dragon, these are ideas you should know. These are ideas that will very help you. They help you a lot because they're kind of very similar openings. I started as an Accelerated Dragon, but I went into a King's Indian fashion. And that is basically the title of today's video is Flexibility in Accelerated Dragon. So it was very nice for me to have this because I'm like, I'm, I can start Kingside attacking him just off the, based off the ideas. Uh, from the king's indian defense that's why i like to play similar openings like with the bishops on g7 so knight to f4 he does take it because this knight can't stay here it's too much trouble so he does take it now which do you take with guys g pawn or the e pawn g pawn or the e pawn g from rav gf4 from darkest army g g g pawn g pawn everybody's saying g pawn E pawn from Quinn. KF32 from Matt Smith. Mic drop. Flex. Slap the moderator. Walk away. How many Imperial March? Oh my goodness. Matt Smith is straight thug life here. KF32 and walks out. Whoa. Monstrous. My my feeble mind feels like D4. Scary. GG. GG. D4 is important. Take the G pawn. Here we go. Shout out to you, Quinn. You said it first. E takes D4. Whoa, everybody like, whoa, wait, what about the G file? What about what, what, what about, what about, what about? Here we go. 
if you take with the G pawn, you you absolutely can take with the G pawn. But the problem is, I'm not trying to trade more. I don't want to really trade as much because I may have to be I may have to be forced to go bishop f6. Because if I go bishop f6, I have to trade this off, which is just another piece less than I have for this attack. And honestly, this attack looks good, but he can easily defend it. And looking at this in the long term fashion, it actually just doesn't work like this, which I can take with the G pawn. But I think taking with the E pawn is better here because I'm able to actually after knight takes and takes, I can play g4 later. And it actually shuts his bishop out temporarily. And think about this. If he ever thinks about pushing g anything, this bishop, remember, that's why I didn't play bishop b7. I didn't want to commit it. I didn't want to commit my bishop early on. And I would have to do something about this later. I just kept it here because it's not necessary yet. I don't know where to put it. Now I know it helps in this side. So I know I'm going to just keep it here. And it's honestly doing the same thing on the same square here. So it's, it's feeling great. I also have g4 for later. But this bishop is shut out from the game. So honestly, he's almost down an entire piece at this point. Feels good. And I also keep my bishop pretty active too. A lot of things can happen. I got a few plans here. I want to now, you know, make this square available and put something very strong here. That's a winter bishop. <laughs> King e4. Okay. Better understanding of why bishop e6 instead of knight e4 doesn't make sense. Why is that, C Nation? We in here, let's go. Happy Friday. That's right, AB. That's right. Let me put my ABs up. Shout out to AB. Shout out to AB in the chat. What's up, bro? On the, I like the concept of crippling pieces. Sometimes just as good as taking them. Yes, I actually had one of... I've lost... Let me think. Accelerated Dragon losses. I've been playing Accelerated Dragon over the board for 2019... Uh, five years. Five years I've been playing Accelerated Dragon over the board. Now, I got two losses out of five years, okay? One of the losses was International Master Maximilian Meinhardt. I remember that one, Maximilian Meinhardt. He was very strong, very, very strong, and I lost because I got a bishop, this bishop, and it was in a closed Sicilian, and at that time, I didn't study it as much. And this bishop got caught. I think he got a nice kingside attack going, and he had a pawn chain like this, and my bishop was on h8. It never got out the rest of the game, and it did cause me to lose because I never could use this piece again. So this is always a concept to remember. This bishop is going nowhere. Nowhere at all. So shout out to you, Rev B94, actually. I go 95. That's exactly what I did, Rav B94. That's exactly what I played. Knight to E5. Knight to E5. Direct pressure on everything. I want him to take this. If he takes this, look at the center. Look at this, guys. Sorry, kind of drunk. Well, hey, it looks like you're probably playing good chess. So looking at this, though, I have control over d4 for a long time. I got a lot of stuff here on d4. And in queen f6 and rook d8, he can never play that. I also have a target myself. At the right moment, I can play f3, and I can mess up his king side. So I thought this would be excellent for black here. Bunkinator, thank you for the follow I thought this was awesome. The clamps are tightening. It looks like, oh, absolutely. It's clamp time. Look how bad white's bishops are. Yes, Gambiteer. Well, actually, this one's a monster, but not so much. They call this hitting air. If I go king h8 and then move this pawn, the bishop literally hits air. It doesn't hit anything at all. It's a nice diagonal, but it's nothing to hit on it. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Um, it's not that it's bad. It's just in that. It's like a good, bad bishop. It's a good one, but it's just bad because it doesn't hit anything. It'd be probably better on this diagonal, just to aim here, just to aim. Um, so this didn't happen, though. No. This did not happen. He did not like that at all. So what he does is queen to e2. Now you have a lot of moves here. And actually, the move that I made here, the engine didn't like it too much because it made it sort of more equal. It made it sort of more equal, and even with correct play, white could be slightly better. But of course, I'm not playing an engine here, absolutely not. So you have a lot of moves here. What do you play? Not that it's bad as no position of support. Correct. What about bishop e6 before moving the high force? Him to take the light square bishop and then the pawn. Well, no, you don't want to go. I just don't want to. I don't want to give this up yet. This bishop is such a powerful piece. And this one is not. So bishop e6 is honestly helping him. Because this is honestly his worst piece. It's the worst piece. It's a good bad bishop. <laughs> right, AB. King away for f5. C4. And then he says, never mind. Okay, yeah, c4 doesn't work. g4 from fly equals fly. If you have that time later, can you analyze and explain why black knight f3 followed by d4 doesn't work 
to open a position. Yes, absolutely. F5. Well, you can't play F5. You got to go King H8 first. The bishop being a very powerful piece is exactly why I understood later that Bishop E6 instead of Knight 4 wasn't great. Ah, yes. Thanks, C Nation. Rook B2 is worse. G4. I feel like something with the Knight. Rook B1. I feel like something with everything. Seems like in between moves. Shout out to all the G4s in the chat. That's exactly what I did. I played G4. The engine didn't like this too much, but I knew I liked this. I liked this a lot. And I think there was a simple line that I think we both missed. I'm trying to figure out what that is right here, right now. It was like simple. Takes. No, that doesn't work. Honestly, nothing looks good here. But the engine, found, like nothing looks good here. Yeah, there's a human evaluation, this don't look good for white. That's why you have to have two evaluations. One, the engine gonna find everything. You can think you have a brilliancy. I sacked the queen on a 2500 USCF, won the game, back in Millionaire Chess. Won the game, it was great, he was an FM. It was great, greatest, probably greatest game ever. But he um, he was winning. Like this queen sack was like, well, no, looks good. But the engine said, well, in this 16 move sequence, you lose. Bro, okay, thanks engine, whatever. So you have to have two evaluations, bro. Two of them. Because it's a human going to figure this out. Which engine do you use? Uh, I mean, the same one, chess.com. <laughs> Stockfish. Uh, Stockfish. Same one. How are you? What's up, Adi Buzz? I'm good. Rook to E8. G4. Boot to Stockfish. Yeah, I just use the Stockfish 10. Like, Stockfish 10. 16 moves sound so ridiculous to me anymore after... Kotal's book on thinking like a grandmaster. That's a great book. Doesn't sound so ridiculous. Yeah, that's true. I go G4. This is what he does. The problem here is if pawn takes, bishop takes, which I think this was the line the engine said was pretty good. Knight takes, pawn takes, and then I'm down a pawn. But look at this attack. Like, who cares, right? I mean, this, this seems strong. This seems very strong. King H8 and Rook G8 at a moment's notice. My queen's able to swing over here. This is ugly for white to play this out, right? But he didn't go this route. He did not. What's your bullet rating? It's a 2570. 2570 bullet right now. Um, White traded knights. Um, actually, so this is what he did. He did. He traded knights. And of course, you can't take this for obvious reasons. The knight's hanging. So you only have you only have two moves here. Do I take the pawn or do I take the knight? And that's what he did. He took the knight. Knight takes c5. Knight takes c5. I take back with the pawn. What does he do? He takes it. Because you kind of have to. And this is the critical line that I thought the longest on before I played G4. We're going to get to this position. And what do you do, guys? It's about to get very flexible and very nice here. Shout out to my students in the chat when we use the drag and drop method here. On when you're going to need to use some pieces now to make this king. If you can make the king. Not saying that any of that is true. What do you do, though? What do you do here? White, black to move. What is the move? Black has a king side attack. And white's rook and bishop are stuck on the queen side. Very nice. Queen G5 from Cavalito. Queen H4 from Rav. Rob, new muse says queen h4, rook, h, rook b6, let's go, says the nation. King h8, queen g5, rook b6, queen g5, queen g5, rook b6. Here we go, guys. Shout out to the queen g5s. Boom, right there in your face. Let's go, big fella. Hello, front door is about to be opened, if it ain't open already. Queen g5, I'm hitting this. You need something to do. How do you defend it? Only real, one realistic move. Unless you're just going to let me take this, we might as well just shake hands right now. So it's not a thing, and he played f3. Now what do you do, guys? Black to move. Finish this attack off. How do you do it? When I attack, I attack relentlessly. Tal is one of my favorite players for a reason because the attack is relentless. Relentless. So you don't play anything like a5, b4, bishop e6, not a move, king h7, not a move. You know, nothing works except h5. h5 is the way to go. Absolutely. Shout out to you guys. h5. So now h5 is on a move. Now he takes it. And then what do you do? And then what do you do? I still want to play Rook B6 from C Nation. Henry 5. Bishop H3, H5. Please tell me Rook B6 was played in this game, he says. Z Nation. Bishop H3. Okay, Bishop H3, Bishop H3. Bishop to A3. Bishop H3, Bishop A3. Y'all know A3 over here. Just so you know, bishop a3 is not a move, so I know you mean h. I know what you mean. Bishop f6, king h8, king h8, queen h takes h5. Here we go. I'm going to stop it all. Shout out to Z Nation again. He pushing real tight. And Cavalito just got it too. Rook b6 is the move here, folks. 
rook to b6 that's the move i made right now i did not need to take this back there's no reason to right now there's no reason to take this right now because rook b6 is about to be nasty i don't want his king to run yet he can't actually run because i always have this check and this rook just gets active for real it's about to get crazy real fast you better be you better be ready for what's about to happen next rook to b6 it's on the board so he goes rook f to d1 because he's like oh no i know what's coming Canty and his friends are on their way. So we need to get up out of here. So he's trying to run and get up out the way. So at this point, I'm like, okay, take on H5 just to hold him here for a second. Because if he's trying to run, I just, you know, you left something before you left, you know. So I, I just want to take this just in case. So I hold him here just for a little bit more. Then he goes all the way off the deep end, but not so much. He like, you know, dangling off the edge. He, he playing, he playing around. He dangles right off the edge before jumping off the deep end. Let me show you. Here we go. G4. Oh my goodness. I'm like, whoa, when he played this move right here, I was like, this man is a genius or he is ridiculous. Like, we don't know. This is a really good game. Thanks for sharing. No problem, GP. No problem. So he plays G4. I'm like, G4? Really? 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 So I'm staring at him while I'm thinking. Staring at him, making him real awkward. Actually, I'm not doing that. But in my mind, I'm staring at him very awkwardly. Like, are you really, this is a move? Is this a move? And I'm, I'm, I'm doing it. G4, everybody says, en passant, en passant, en passant. Absolutely unanimous. I, there's not another move. Why would I do anything else? I got made a very nice rook left. Yes. So I have to en passant this. I do. Pawn takes G3. It's kind of forced for him to take here. And now, what do you do here, guys? Oh, this is nice. This is nice right here. This is nice. Mr. Royal with the tier one. Thank you so much, big fella. Appreciate it. Let me see the new lightsabers you got. It's like a party in your stomach with tequila rice, correct? Correct, yeah, right. So this is a good one, guys. This one right here, I remember sitting here, and when I analyzed with this with the engine, I was so happy that I made the right moves. Up until a point, and I'll show you what that point is, but let me show you what it is. Lola chest zero, says Rick F6, Rick G6, Rick G6, Rick G6, Rick H6. <laughs> oh man, guys, this is some powerful stuff. This is some powerful stuff here. So, watch this. Rook to g6 is not the move. Oh my goodness. Oh man. Rook to g6 ain't the move, big fella. It's not. It's not the move. Rook h6 doesn't do really anything. I can honestly run. What I saw him doing is running away. He was able to run away. Watch this. King f2. I probably sat here for 30 minutes because I was trying to figure out how to mate him. But after King f2, if I turn the engine on, Okay, it's only equal if I do rook takes g3. If rook takes g3, the best I can get is minus 0 0.06. Actually, it's going up. Now it's saying minus 0 0.46. Now it's at minus 1. But don't you think it'd be mate? I'm doing all this for minus 1? No. It's not about to happen. Minus 1? Come on, bro. It's not a thing. I tried everything here. I sat here for 30 minutes trying to figure this out. And then I was glad that the engine told me, yeah, you can get this kind of thing going. But this is, this is what the engine recommends right after rook takes king takes right watch this guys i was like so i tried bishop here i tried bishop here i tried all the checks i tried everything the engine says the best move is queen g5 check okay let's see where they go next let it load king to f2 queen h4 check okay i'm like oh man there are made if he goes the wrong way he's definitely getting made it but if he goes to any well, okay he can't go here but if he goes to any one of these squares his mate even king g2 is a problem because the bishop comes in with check and I think actually that line was weird. It was like this, and then check, and then king h1, and then bishop check. Ha, you thought you was doing something. And then he leaned back like this and look at you real hard. And then back to the game. Like, look at you real hard. You know your heart be beating so fast right now. You know you'll be, you know your heart be beating real fast. Thanks for the anonymous gifter just gifted five subs to the channel. Thank you so much for the love. That is so awesome right there, guys. Get some hype in the chat for the anonymous gifter. Whoever you are, thank you so much. Gifting five subs to the channel. Put some lightsabers in the chat. There they are. There they are, guys. There they are. Wow. Such a generous person. Thank you. Appreciate that a lot. We just got to take some gratitude here. Thank you so much for that. Thank you so much. Appreciate the love. Thanks for the follow. And Chuck D4, there you go. Lightsabers all through the chat. So generous. Great guy. Support Canty. Thanks, Rob. Thanks, guys. Lightsabers in the chat for a minute here. Thank you so much. Throw some more in there. Appreciate that.
really so that's just not a move that sequence does not work it does not work so watch let's follow what the engine says right after this check is king to g1 and at this point guys i remember sitting here thinking to myself i sacked the rook i sacked an exchange and i can't get mate i can't get mate i cannot get mate and that is why i did not play rook to g6 it's not that you guys were wrong but it wasn't the best it was not the best so uh what what when, when's your big contract for mixer go three <laughs> oh man oh, that'd be great you get a big contract like that something i don't that'd be great good night tonight today mr canty thank you so much 99 mirror that's right thanks for the follow nice count carl thanks so i didn't go rook g6 it was not a move it was just not a move guys bishop takes this looks so beautiful and that's why you have to think this is why they give you time to think because you need to know what's better when you find a good move look for a better one and, and you know mr lasker was excellent with that okay he was excellent with that. that's why he was like a world champion for the longest because he understood some of the stuff that we still don't even understand so gp recommended bishop h6 yeah, as queen h3, thanks for the follow. Rook f6. So here we go, guys. Rook h6 is just not a move. Rook g6, I sat there for 30 minutes trying to figure it out. It didn't work. So only thing is rook to f6. Rook to f6. So shout out to the rook f6s in the chat. Shout out to you. That is correct. Because now what happens on king f2? Let's show it. King f2, if he does run this way, bishop g4, and I'm picking up material now. Now I'm picking up material. So now you can't run away. So I forced him, and I'm also threatening this pawn at the same time. So now he's in trouble. So he can't play king f2, so he has to do something else. How do you actually accurately defend this pawn? Think about that. So he has to go like king to g2, which may be some trouble. If king to g2, I can just check him here and take this pawn no matter where you go, unless you go here, and then we go back into the same thing. So he is in some rid ridiculously ma massive trouble here, bro. So darkest army says rook f1. That is correct. That is correct. So he goes rook to f1. He defends it. Now, we still got a lot of work to do here, guys. I mean, there's still another uh, 20 moves here almost. So looking at this, there's still some work to do. Black to move, folks. What do you do? After rook f1, how do you finish this? You need something else to do. You have to be accurate and think about everything. Got to get some sleep. Good night, Cantina community. Thanks, Martin Kessler. Thanks for sticking around. Bishop h6. Okay, that's a good move. That's a good move. King h7. Okay, maybe for a rook lift. Bishop h6. I like it. Good night, Matt and the bear. King h8, bringing the other rook. Hey, Canty. What's up? Italian machine. Yo, what's up, bro? Welcome to the stream. Good to see you, bro. Queen h3. Bishop h3 from Darkest Army. Bishop h3 from Italian Machine. So we stop it right there. Shout out to Italian Machine coming in, finding the answer too. Darkest Army is correct. I went Bishop h3. I think threats first, guys. I'm always a threats first guy. That's why I like tactics and Tao, of course, right? So yo, Canty, what's up, Nas? Welcome. So Bishop h3. I hit him with Bishop h3. Here's the concept behind it. If you move the rook, then of course I just take it, right? It's simple chess. You move the rook, I take the pawn. So you have to go rook to f2. But now, this is why move orders are great. Reverse the move order, retrograde analysis, start from the end in position, work your way backwards. All these little concepts work, and it has to come now. Now work to g6. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, you in some trouble. King h2, hit him with the move. Get the man off the board. Get him out of here. That's not a move. So it is very, very tough for him to be here. It doesn't work. It doesn't work at all. Bishop h3, rook f2, rook g6, correct. Italian machine is correct here. Absolutely. So after Bishop H3, he has to make another move. Hit me with the pin. Man's playing very strong chess. Queen H2, because now I can't move my bishop. Strong, very strong. So now, tell me what do you do now, guys? I think actually I made a move. The engine made a different move here, I think. Yeah, and I thought about that. Right now it's minus seven. And I didn't make the move that was like minus seven here at all at all there's actually two moves here i could have played two separate ways we have bishop h6 queen g5 bishop h6 your bullet rating is 700 points more than me that's okay audi buzz uh 1800 you 1800 that's, that's strong though 1800 is still good get it up bro get it up there rook takes f3 rook h6 bishop h6 queen g5 and queen e3 check well queen g5 hangs the bishop you know, this is the defense. So, and in queen e3, I just step out the way, probably just stare at you real hard for making this blunder. Real awkwardly, just stare at you very hard. Absolutely not a move. Bishop h6, 
Bishop h6 actually is the computer move. For some reason, I didn't do this because I thought he could just go here. I thought he was just fine here. Let me actually see what the engine says. Because I, I thought this was fine. And after rook here, what do you do? Like, how does the engine crush this? You know what? It's not it's not any of the moves you would think. The first move is actually king h7. Apparently, that's minus 10. That's very hard to see here, guys. I mean, very difficult to know that I have to play king h7 right here. Out of all the stuff going on, king h7. But I guess it, it makes sense because if you think about his position, he's tied up completely. Sometimes patience, which is very hard to do when you have this kind of advantage initiative, you feel like you're winning. Sometimes it's hard to have patience. And actually here, I, I just have to have patience. And actually, I thought he was able to run away, but he can never go here due to this. So it was just winning everywhere. I just had to be a little more patience and bring the last pieces into the game. It was absolutely uh, very informative, to say the least. But let's go back. I'm going to show you what happened. Let me see if anybody said the move, actually. After queen h2, we have bishop h6, rook h6 from a, b, rook g6 now. Rook takes f3. F8, rook, he's zigzagging. Correct, correct. Idea of rook to g8. Oh, yeah, from king h7, right. Scratch that. No, rook takes f3 from easy rider. King h7. Yeah, king h7 was a nice one, too. That was actually minus 10 move was king h7. But this is what I did. I actually played rook h6. Because honestly, I'm just threatening to take this and like and do other stuff and maneuver. I just went rook to h6. A Trojan will see it, says Christopher James. Yeah, he would. Absolutely. Can't deal way too cool to be a chess teacher. I like the polar opposite. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, man. Welcome to the stream, big fella. Rook h6 and um, that's what I did. Thanks for the follow. Bazanarama, bro. That's sweet. Try to say that five times. I'm going to actually try that. Bazanarama. So uh, rook to h6. That rook's been schmoovin'. <laughs> I was like, what is this word? That rook's been schmoovin'. Okay, gotcha. That's funny. He played rook f2. Um, Did he play rook f2? Let me see what he did, actually. He honestly played... And what's wrong with rook f2? I think I got rook g6. For some reason, I think it's just fine after rook g6. Let's see, though. I just need to see it because I honestly don't remember. And I don't see it. So let me see what's after rook f2. And now it's queen g5. Oh, okay. And then bishop hf1 kind of thing. It's still a mix-up as I, I'm just winning here. It's it's pretty tough. Pretty tough. But um, what, what he played actually here was king to f2. He started running. Nice vision, Canty. Thank you so much. Thank you. Be right, B. Be right back. Okay, AB. So um, he, he actually, he ran. He started to run. And I was like, oh, man, this was, bro, this was great. I remember this game vividly at this moment. And I was like, I went into another, I actually got in time trouble at one point. Not like bad. It was like maybe five minutes or something. But when you're playing a long game and you do get down to five minutes, it is noticeable. Like, oh, snap. I was just playing a long game for the last hour and a half, two hours. And now I'm down to like five minutes. So you do, try, trying to switch into blitz mode can cause you to lose immediately. But you don't want to stay in slow push mode. Because if you do, then you, you run out of time. So here, king 2 f2. Um, he went here and I calculated this line. Oh man, what do you do guys? Let me just put this in chat. I can't wait to show you. Can't wait to show you what this looked like. Man, talk about calculations guys. This is so informative. I was very, very like, oh my goodness. What do you do? What do you do here? At five minutes, I take the rook trade and queens grind it out. Says Mr. Royal, take the rook, f1, f5, rook f6, bishop f1, f5, king h8. Here we go guys. <laughs> Oh man, this was this was awesome. This was awesome. Bishop to e6, rook f6, rook d8. Oh, here we go. Here we go. This is this is what happened. This is what happened. So at first I was like, you know, you can get material there. Yeah, just take the rook, right? Great game. But why keep your king on g8? Says Game of Tier. Well, you you kind of. I mean, honestly, I thought that I had to, and and you know, many moves, many moves. The king, the 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 engine just said king h7. But I was more into like get the king now and not less patience. I was not into patience because I thought he was able to run away at a rapid rate. I thought he was able to run away and then it'd be a problem. So, you know, so if we're feeling your rap as well, <laughs> boss. That's funny, really. All right, cool, cool. Bishop g6, f5. So um, this is what happened though. If bishop takes f1, I was, man, I, can't, I was uh, showing this again is like, man, I remember all the emotions here. After bishop takes f5, takes, takes, right? Okay, thanks for the follow, appreciate it. So after takes, takes, I think it was taken with the rook. I don't remember which one it was with, but having this position, how do you win this game? Let me actually turn the engine on. Let me actually turn the engine on. 
What's the eval here? Get somebody guess the eval. What do you think the eval here is? Do you think you're winning with the black pieces? Do you think you're winning right now? Four twenty. <laughs> minus one, minus one point two, minus six, minus seventy six. Okay. All right. All right. Level twenty. I see you. Minus point eight, minus one, minus one. Okay, minus three, even from Admiral, plus five, plus point five, equal, equal, equal. Guys, it is minus 1.1, 1 .1, right? But do you feel, remember, remember, we have to have two evaluations here. One is the human eval, and one is the engine evaluation. So the engine says it's minus 1.1. 1 .1. That says a lot, that you up, you up an exchange, you're up a full exchange, but you only minus one. I mean, you might be even, if you're not careful here, you might even lose this game because these bishops are so sharp. So how do you feel, right? This does not feel that good. You're a great chess analyst and entertainer. In this day and age, game needs more people like yourself. Thank you so much. Appreciate the love, Rob B 94 Means a lot. Thank you. Appreciate it. This does not feel like I'm winning. And I didn't want to go through all of that just to get here, just to get to this position. I was not a fan of this at all. I don't even know what to do. Is this realistic? He can even sit here and laugh at me, stare at you real hard, fold his arms, stare at you real hard as you make your next move. That's like tough. That's tough, man. I was not a fan of this at all. Not a fan of it. So I was like, you know what? I can't take this rook. White's up a pawn and bishop pair for rook about equal. Yes, Salarian. Yes, I did not take this rook. I wasn't into it at all. So I played the, the alternative. I just played rook f6. I was like, I'm not taking this rook. We're about to chill here. I need to threaten something right now. And now if he moves the king, I can probably take with check and then maneuver my king or something. But he didn't He didn't do this. Now, the move here, and actually rook f6 here, let me see. Right now, it's super equal. It's like super equal. After queen h1, he's supposed to go here. This is the move he's supposed to make. Okay, get this, guys. Just the move he's supposed to make. That don't mean that he made this move. He did not make this move right here. Okay, and honestly, he said this in post game analysis. He was like, "Yeah, I looked at it, but I don't know why I played it." And I was like, "I don't know either. I didn't even see it. Like, I was in time trouble. This was a lot. I didn't see it either, honestly. And if he would have played here, I probably would have just went back because I didn't know what to do. And I was like, "Oh snap! I didn't even calculate that one." Nobody finds that move. Yeah, <laughs> he didn't find it. Of course not. I mean, not not nobody finds this move, but a very difficult move to find. Queen h1? Really? Really? Queen h1. And now it's like equal, equal, equal. But he didn't go here. What he did, guys, okay, what he did. Let me tell you what he did. Let me tell you what he did. When he made this move, okay, he took the elevator up to the top floor, okay? He saw the balcony, and then he jumped off all the way down with a smile that's exactly what happened let me actually show you what happened here let me actually show you he made this move here we go let, let me get some that's not a moves in the chat right here rook he no this is what he did this is what he did rook g1 rook g1 100 bits from anonymous chair thank you so much it's not the pawn he took on e5 no he did this right here somebody please put him in it let me see that that's not a moves right now in the chat that's not a move that's not a move let's put some deep ends in the chat to match the energy there that's what happened. He went rook to g1. And I sat here and I was like, rook g1? I mean, I know you was in trouble. I know it was tough. I know, okay? I know. If you need somebody to talk to after this game, it's going to be all right. I'll be here for you. But rook to g1. And he jumped off the deep end here, folks. It was over. It was over. Now, let me show you the sequence because it's still not over. It's not over. But it's kind of over. It's kind of over. Let's see what happened. Let's see what happened. Automatic, queen takes f3. King e1. Okay. How do you follow up? How do you follow up? Mr. Royal says, most instinctive. What's the eval after king e2? That's a good question, actually. Let me look at that real quick. King f2, rook f6, king e2. Because I was curious about this too, which you can give up the exchange. The eval says, uh, it's actually equal. It's like minus no, now it says it's equal. Yeah, it just says equal, which I thought I thought the same. I'm not about to trade queens, but also it's kind of weird. I might have to end up trading queens. Like, I don't know. And I honestly probably wouldn't take that. So, but he didn't go there. King f2, rook f6, rook g1, queen takes f3. And then he goes king to e1. And then they say queen e3 check. Correct, guys. Queen e3 check. He goes here. Where do you hit him next? 
Where do you hit the man next? Lightsaber out. You caught him with a move. Now you're trying to combo him and take him down. Take him down. He's still fighting back. You're hitting him with the saber. Oh, he dodges you real quick, but he's he's wounded. He's wounded. King to D1. What, what do we hit him? Where do we hit him? Bishop G4 check. Bishop G4. Rook F1. Rook F1. Not a move, big fella. Not a move. Not a move. Queen D3 check. There it is. Snapped on D3. Just to take more material. Open up more lines for more pieces. Just in case we get back into the same position again. So queen takes D3. He goes queen C1. What do I do now? Next move. Next move. Hurry up. Put it in the chat. Where is it? How do we finish him? Finish him. Finish him. What do you do? King to C1. Bishop H6. Bishop G4. Queen to D6. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Let me... Let me stop you real quick. Bishop h6, check. I meet your check with a check. Oh my goodness. No, he didn't. Not that I'm losing, but I'm scared now. I didn't expect that. I ain't see that coming. How you gonna hit my check with a check? You supposed to, wait, what? What? I, I, I thought you was in check. No, you in check. Oh, what? At Bishop h6, check. Block a check with a check. Believe, uh, Unbelievable, right? So that's just not a move. I wasn't a fan of it. So I play queen e3 check. He goes king c2 so he can run out the back door. Try to get out of here before the, the, all the Jedi come and see him real quick. So king to c2. I take another pawn. Give me another pawn. Everything must go. Everything must go. So it's all on clearance. It's all free today. So queen takes c4. He gets out of the way. King c1. I go back. Queen e3. Okay. We hit him everywhere with this lightsaber. Combo, combo, combo. King c2. Find the next move. What do you do? What do you do? Get that mate. Thanks, Sam, man. Thanks, Sam. What do you do, guys? What do you do? What do you do? C4, not a move. Not a move. It needs to be with check. If you notice here, let's start this all over. If you notice here, the best players do it with check when it comes to attacking. Because you don't want to give him any kind of counterplay or any kind of means of defense. So check, he had to respond. 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 Check, he has to respond. King here. What do you think you do now? What do you think you do now? Bishop at five, C4 from 99 mirror. That is correct. C4. He has to respond. Okay. King B4. King out here in the middle of the street. King out here in the middle of the street on the wrong side of the Jedi town. Okay. King B4 looking crazy over here. Something's about to go down. What do you do, guys? Find the move here. 500 bits from Razor Brand. Thank you so much. Appreciate that, bro. Appreciate that. A5, A5, A5. Nice job. Nice job. A5. That man that king's moving. Right. A5. Beautiful play. That is correct. I hit him with A5 to open up everything. He takes on A5. How do you finish him off here, guys? Many ways. Many ways. I just want to see it in the chat. Who's first to put it in there? Queen B6. I didn't go there. I actually didn't go Queen B6 because he can just go back to B4 and it's not mate yet. I mean, it's it's going to be mate. It just ain't mate yet. Rook A8. There it is from X Steve. Correct. Rook A8 check just to get another piece in the game. So now it's going to be mate in a few. King to b4. Find the move, guys. Two moves. Made in two. Made in two. Can you find it? Can you find it? Made in two. Incredible where the king is. A real marathon. You put him in Mr. Canty. Ja ja. <laughs> nice. Thanks. Rook a4. Rook a4. Okay, put the follow up. Put the move in the follow up. Because I'm not going to. I want to see both moves. Both moves. So none of those moves count. None of those moves count. What are the two moves back to back? Musio, Rook A4, Bishop D7, Rook A4, Queen B6, Rook B6. Man, oh my goodness. I've only seen it one time. Mr. Royal said it first. I mean, Mr. Royal said it second. Shout out to, who said it first? It was Musio, Rook A4, Bishop D7. That's what I did. Rook A4, Queen B6 is not made. Oh my goodness, fatal, fatal. I mean, he still probably made it over here, but that was fatal. Like, you did not need to do that. I mean, that was mate. It is made this way. That took an extra move. But don't do that again. Don't do that one. But here, actually, it's just bishop d7 now. And now it's made on the board. The king is cut off from all squares as it's checkmate everywhere. Pretty nice. I was able to do this all with check every single time into a mating net. Into a mating net. And here's the flexibility, again, of the accelerated dragon. Now, starting this from the beginning, once again, looking at this game, if you're just getting here and didn't know what happened, these are the starting moves. E4, C5, Knight of 3. You go G6, because if you go D6, you run into Bobby Fischer's memorable 60 games. Game number two, thank you for that Z Nation. When it talks about sack, sack, mate in the game. Sack, sack, mate. Well, you get in trouble if you go D6 out of out the gate. G6, you can go D5 later, so you get to hold this pawn. That's why I said hyper-accelerated, completely different. 
Thanks for showing the game and analysis. No problem. That was pretty checkmate. Thank you. Your stream is excellent. Asking for audience movies. Real nice touch. Thank you. Thank you, bro. That's what we do. Every stream. Beautiful King Hunt. Thank you. Bishop F8. Wait, wait, wait. Is Bishop F8? King takes B5. Queen C5. Check. Is Bishop F8 check? Oh, I think it is. I mean, if the bishop was able to get the F8. All for Christmas is to go get... Oh, that's nice. <laughs> all I want for Christmas is to get to cross my arms and stare real hard at my opponent. That's awesome right there. That's awesome. Hello, big fellow. What's up, Fadu? Thanks for the follow, Sneaky Goose. Nice mate. Thank you, thank you. So, can we go through Knight of 3 followed by D4? Do you mean like here right now? Are you talking about right now, Mr. Royal? Is that what you're talking about? So, um, real quick, guys, we just go through this game here and see if we can answer that question. But here it got very flexible. This is the flexibility you get in Accelerated Dragon. Flexibility is very strong here as you go 97 to follow D5, stuff like that. The engine likes to play it this way, so I play it like the engine does. So, A3, Knight G to E7, get out the way. H6, I'm still very flexible. 100 bits from B Cha. Thank you so much. You're entertaining and informative. Thanks, man. Thank you so much. This is what we do all the time, B Cha. So, hopefully, we'll see you in the next one. No, when he played it. No, when you played it in the game. So can we go knight f3 followed by d4? Um, where is that at? What are you talking about? Is it here? Knight f3 followed by d4. I do not know what moves you're talking about. Where? Knight f4, I keep by mistake. Oh, knight f4. Okay. So you're saying. Can we go knight f4 followed by d4? So meaning he, him playing d4 or me playing d4? Who's playing d4? Queen to d2, g5, knight to g6. And then I hit him with this move here. Interesting because d4 is definitely coming. Very annoying. So I hit him with e5. c3 happens. And then I go knight f4. So do you mean d4 right now? Is this what you're saying? d4 right now actually loses uh, a pawn, which is pretty cool. If d4, you take here first, snap, snap. Um, and I could snap here. I got two defenders here. It's hard to get to this one. Queen f6. Interesting play, but I am up a pawn. I am up a pawn right now. So that's probably not the best. And knight f4. d4 looks good, though. But I am getting rid of one of the defenders of the pawn. Actually, two of them, because the queen was defending, too. So now I just snap. Snap, snap, snap. Doing pretty good here. I'm just up a pawn. Still weird stuff. Still weird. and But he didn't go for it. He went for this. And I went 95, hoping that he takes it. So we have a very solid structure. And the pawn chain looks beautiful on that side. And it didn't work. So he played queen e2. I go g4. This is how he got in here. Takes, takes, takes on g4. Queen g5 at this point. I know I'm about to attack this man. f3, h5. After snapping, rook b6 first. Because I can do this. I just wanted to rook lift just to be ready. So he's like, yeah, I'm about to leave. I'm like, uh, this party's whack. I'm leaving. And I was like, not yet, actually. Uh, not yet. So if he moves, then the bishop's gone. So he goes g4. I was like, whoa, whoa. Did not see that one. So I opposite. He opposites. Rook g6, not a move. We just talked about that. Just talked about that. So rook f6 to make him do what we want him to do. What's the computer think of g4? Great question. Let me see. g4. Engine says minus two after F takes and rook F6, just like the Jedi did. Absolutely. Minus two. So minus two. Oh, you're from Detroit? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Your move G4. Not his. My move G4. Uh, the engine didn't. Let me actually. The engine didn't like my move G4. I think it was saying it was like equal or like this line right here. Actually, right now. It says right now that it's equal. And that says a lot. Like, it's equal after this. Takes, takes. And then it says... Let me see. It says bishop takes f4. That's the best move. And I showed this early on. But honestly, if you do this as a human evaluation, do you really think that you're better? As with the white pieces here. It's very tough to think so because there's so much play. Honestly, you're up a pawn, but that's up a pawn because it's doubled. We don't... It's a double pawn, so we don't really care. It's not really up a pawn at all. And looking at this with the human evaluation, because the engine right now says that, you know, oh, yeah, it's okay. It's okay. It's fine. It's okay. How much theory do you study? Nowadays, a lot, Benatori. A lot. I do, of course, tactics all day, every day kind of thing. But definitely, I do a lot of theory now. Because after 2200, after you reach 2200, 2300, stuff like that, you can focus more on theory and less of other stuff. 
but uh still you want to I, I like to do a lot of everything just put in a lot of work honestly higher for life <laughs> okay bro welcome to the stream what the d that's lit that's right man we never banned out never heard of him honestly never heard of him sam never heard of him i want to reach 2000 period you absolutely can you absolutely can so we go oh this didn't happen actually what happened was here again let's go here queen g5 h5 rook b6 takes takes i take rook f6 best move rook f1 bishop h3 hit him with the move queen h2 beautiful move pinning me pinning me and then rook h6 should have played something better how do you train and study Jedi? Uh, many different ways. Many different ways. Um, honestly, I usually you can reach me offline. Just actually, uh, add me as a friend. I tell you that, and also I do have the lessons tab as two. Two. Uh, all my students train the same way that I do. Uh, stuff like that. What is the theory so far you got for itself? For myself, you mean? What is the theory so far I got? You got for itself? I think you mean the myself. Theory so far, a lot of I mean French defense, Roy Lopez, uh, shoot everything, a lot of things, a lot of things. Your chess strategy is amazing. Thank you, Sam. Thank you. So Rook H six, King F two, Rook F six. I go back. He should have went Queen H one, but he jumped off the deep end. Oh my goodness, the man jumped all the way off. Send a stretcher to his address as he goes Rook to G one. Hit him with F three, and the game was over. Check for life, full life. Check in here. Check, 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 check everywhere. Oh my goodness, bam. And he just got hit with the sink and it's over mate so you play a very good game honestly pretty tough stuff but that's flexibility in the accelerated dragon 